Hello, my name is Jonah Baldel. I attend The Ohio State University Marion, and I don't have a department because I am a CCP student. So I'm actually a senior in high school taking all college courses. Today, I'll be talking about the impact of traditional medicine on wild tokay geckos. So my research question is, what is the impact of taking these geckos from the wild, whether uh, legally or poaching, on the wild populations of these toke geckos in their native range of India, Indonesia, and South and Southeastern Asia. So these uh, geckos are collected for the pet trade partly. I was originally gonna focus more on the pet trade, but there's less research on that. And there's more research on um, their collection on, for their medicinal value, but also it seems like uh, the Chinese traditional medicine has more of an impact on this species. So they're valued uh, because they're said to be able to cure all kinds of things, and these are not uh, proven by uh, Western biomedicine. So here you can see in figure one, uh, we have toke geckos on skewers. This was actually sent uh, to me by a friend of mine in Singapore. He saw this at a local market. And these are toke geckos. They have been, I assume, taken from the wild. Um, but we're not entirely sure whether or not they were taken illegally or poached. And then they were put on skewers and kind of their skin is out like this. He explained to me that these are supposed to be boiled and then that that liquid or, or stew is supposed to be drinking um, to treat all kinds of illnesses. So in figure two, you can see these geckos. They are very large tropical arboreal geckos. They are probably one of the largest geckos. I know not the largest, but they can get 12 to 14 inches. On the left, you can see a uh, female that I personally own. Her name is Eleanor. She is a rescue. I don't know if she was captive bred or taken from the wild and imported, but I would assume imported because uh, she uh, came to me in very poor conditions. So I assume that the person that I got her from got her from very poor conditions, but she has been doing very well with me and is very uh, robust. And then on the right, you can see a smaller one that is a male. This is one that I took in but ended up rehoming just because uh, I decided not to uh, pursue breeding the species, um, but I hope to be able to breed them in the future. But now he's uh, with somebody else and doing very well. So you can see the geographical range of these toke geckos. Um, they're found in India, uh, Asia, and Indonesia. And at the very northeastern side of um, this, this highlighted area is the Santipur district of Assam, India, or in that area, um, there is that region. And that is the area focused on by the the main article that I focused on for this paper. So I found an article that I believe to be really good because it focused on the anthropological side of things and it focused on how the people know about the species and how they interact with it there. So here in figure four, you can see the area that was studied or the example of the area that was studied. Um, you can see these concrete slash mud huts and the home gardens around them. And this is what was studied. And basically what they found was that uh, when there were people in kind of low income areas or with uh, financial insecurity, they might resort to poaching. So to prevent this in the future, um, new protected areas like the Narami Tiger Reserve should be implemented because more geckos were found around there. And as well, um, uh, more, more of the laws should be enforced. This area, it was actually legal to collect in them, but they did uh, assume that some of the people were poaching because of uh, what they found and what they knew about the geckos. 
uh, to, to prevent this happening in the future, more laws should be put in place and more uh, enforcement of those laws to prevent the endangerment of the species. I hope you learned something from this presentation and I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.